Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. Last episode, we started working on just a little bit of blood magic in order to make ourselves the imperfect ritual stone so we can make it always nighttime, sleep to pass the day, and then use it again to make it nighttime so it's easy for us to look through our telescope and find constellations that we're looking for. And as it so happens on this night, we actually have a constellation that we're looking for. This is the Horologium one, which appears very rarely, like every 28 Minecraft days between occurrences. So we should now have that up in the sky somewhere. Not actually seeing it, is it below the horizon? Might be, yeah, it's right there, okay. So we can see the constellation right there. So on this night, we can go ahead and attune uh, different crystals to that particular constellation. Um, now, one good thing about the imperfect ritual stone, like I was talking about, you can click it to make it nighttime, but then you have to sleep in your bed to change the day. So I can click this again. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, it says day 454. If I right-click this, it's still day 454, which means the Horologium constellation is still available for us to use. So as long as I don't ever let it change day, we can keep this in the sky and we can work on other things that we need in order to attune stones to that or attune crystals to that. So we have in this chest here, some uh, high purity crystals. I think we had some other high purity crystals around as well. I don't remember what I did with them. Mm, are they in this chest? They're in this chest. Yeah, these are all perfect crystals. So these are the crystals that we want to attune to the Horologium constellation. Uh, we want to do like five of them. I might, mm, yeah, I think just about five. I think that's all we're going to do. Let's not get too crazy. The other ones we'll keep in case we want to attune to other constellations. Uh, so let's find the Horologium, this one. Put it in our offhand like we do. And then pick in our main hand. We're going to get rid of this current constellation because we are not trying to attune to that one. We've already attuned ourselves to that one. But yeah, we only want to attune to the Horologium. So how many times am I gonna say that constellation name? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's uh, make a bet on that, I guess. So there's this one, that one, and there we go. So now we are all set. Perfect, our hourglass constellation is ready to go. So if we cue ourselves a crystal right there, we should attune it. And then uh, the celestial crystals, we want to turn into floating crystals. I can't remember exactly how you do that. Let's take a look through the quests here. Celestial altar. Why do I keep hearing something? What is that sound? Oh no. Advancement made. Cool. Give me that. Okay, so now we have an attuned celestial crystal, and it is tuned to Horologium. So I wanted to see, though, the uses on this. How we turn that into a floating crystal? I guess uh, we can do this. Celestial collector crystal. Ah, that's what it's called, collector crystal. So on the celestial altar, you take an attuned celestial crystal, and then you put it with four resonating gems, four stardust, and four illumination powder, and you can make yourself a celestial collector crystal. Now what's really good about those is one collector crystal on the proper base can power an iridescent altar maximum even during daytime. So that means we can get rid of these guys over here. They serve their purpose. We won't need these anymore. We'll just have the one, uh, what do you call it? The floating crystal, celestial collector crystal. We'll have that. And that will be on the special base for it, which is in this book somewhere. I ha Like I said, I don't really remember how to get through this book and which one is which. Is it maybe Constellation? It says in here how to do it somewhere. I will have to go through the book and find it. I'm not going to bore you guys with me trying to find it in the book. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and attune uh, these other Celestial Crystals just the same because we want to make a total of four of these. If not more, but we want to have that many of them. Uh, so when we make ourselves the ritual for this particular constellation, we'll be able to power it very, very much. Yeah, the more power you give it, 
the more tick acceleration you get out of it. Four is like about where you want to be, but you can definitely add more from what I understand. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. We'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So since we are trying to make the floating crystals, I feel like this is the best time to try and automate uh, the starlight infuser that we have over here. Yeah, we're supposed to place a item and then right click it with a wand or whatever. And it takes a little bit of time to do that. And I got to sit there and camp it. So I'd rather not do that uh, if I don't have to. Uh, anyway, so let's grab, whoops. Let me grab a couple of redstone here. Don't need that glowstone. So we are going to make two droppers. And then we're going to turn those into mechanical users. There we go. Awesome. Yep, very, very simple stuff. And then over here, we're going to place one mechanical user and that's going to be set to right click and that's going to be activate block with item. And in here, we need to place a resonating wand. I can't remember how expensive that wand is, but we'll have to make another one. And then on the other side, we'll place another one of these. That's just uh, activate block with item. And in there we do kind of the same thing, except we place the item that we want to be uh, processed. So this one is going to always try and right click whatever items in in this inventory onto the Starlight Infuser. And this one is always going to be right clicking the resonating wand on there. And then they just kind of auto craft. Yep. Uh, so this thing is not working. Why is it not working? Okay, so we took a thing of liquid starlight, but we have our containment chalice here. I wonder if this mechanical user is blocking the starlight infuser from using the containment chalice. I actually don't know if that's how that works or not. I might have to move these. So this is on that side and this one's on this side. So this can see the containment chalice. I thought this just had to be somewhere within range. Okay. Well, apparently something's broken here. So let me try rearranging things. Ooh. Oh boy. I just did a, I did a, a bad thing here. <laughs> okay, got a lot of blocks in my inventory. What block goes where? Looks like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I really did some... I, I really caused a whole lot of havoc here. And now that block is gone. Okay, let me fix this. All right, so a quick fix later. I had both of the blocks in my inventory. It just wasn't showing up or I was blind one of the two. Anyway, we got the two blocks placed and now this is working the way that it should be working. Yep, so like I said, this one's just always trying to activate the block. This one's always trying to place a new item inside the block. Yep, and this will just keep going and going and going until we run out of fluid in our uh, containment chalice over here, which will happen eventually. But we should be able to get through a stack or two of items before that will happen. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up. We're going to start looking at doing the uh, floating crystals. Let's take a look at this. So that does require the star dust and the illumination powder. Another thing that we can do over there, if we grab the uh, item collector and then we just grab a chest, we can make it so this item collector will always grab the items that this is processing here, so we don't despawn anything. And we're probably gonna set this to like a lower one radius, should be more than enough. Yep, and then that'll just go right into its inventory right here. Perfect, okay, so now we don't have to worry about items despawning. Okay, so moving on, we want to get some stardust. We should have plenty of that, actually, from us growing those crystals. So we have Illumination Powder, Stardust, Resonating Gems. Is that all we needed? I think it is. Cool. So let's go ahead and make one of these floating crystals together. And we should be able to get this all hooked up. Uh, I will have to borrow that Resonating Wand, though. All right, looks like we can do it. Let me grab the Resonating Wand real quick. Boop this. Okay, so that's being booped. We'll put it back over here. So this can continue to do its thing. Awesome. Yeah, so I don't think we're going to run out of star juice. We might, but now that we have this, we won't ever run out of star juice. Okay, so this is the multi-block structure. And if we go to the astral tome, we can find it here. If we go back, this is in the constellation section. And that is under the enhanced collector crystal. Yep. So you just build this little multi-block guy. Nothing too fancy. All right, remove the torch. We will place our celestial collector crystal here. 
And then remove this block. It's got to be an airspace there. Yep, and we can see particles floating into it. We know everything is correct. The only other thing we need to do now is link this to our altar. So let me grab the linkity link. Uh, do I not have a linkity link on me? I don't see it. Is it my inventory? I don't see it at all. Link, double click. It's right here. I'm just blind. Found it. All right, so we do a right click on this and a right click onto here. And that should send all of its starlight power over to the iridescent altar. And you can see now we are completely full on starlight. And it should be completely full all the way at noon, which is when it would be at its lowest. But yeah, I think uh, with the enhanced collector crystal, yeah, we should be full all the time. So now we no longer need these guys. We can go ahead and get rid of these things. This is just kind of like a little bandage or whatever to allow us to proceed. But yet, now that we have the Enhanced Collector Crystal, we no longer need this. All right, so we made ourselves four more of the Celestial Collector Crystals. These are all uh, attuned to Horologium. And then we have a Celestial Crystal here that's not a Collector Crystal, just an attuned crystal tuned to the same thing. So we're all set for when we're going to hook up the Ritual. We're not going to do that today, I don't think. Uh, we've done quite a bit of Astral Sorcery in these last episodes. So we're only going to do pretty much what's required of us for today. Uh, moving on, we were looking at doing the semi-controller, and this thing required us to have the crystal cluster, which is why we started into Astral Sorcery in the first place. We needed this iridescent altar. Uh, we want our iridescent altar to always have starlight, so we have that under control. But uh, a thing about the iridescent altar is you have to focus certain constellations in order to do crafting recipes. And as you can see, this one has a constellation right here. Uh, so this constellation, if you don't know what it is, you can just go into your book, look at your constellation tabs, and you scroll over until you can see that it's octans. So octans, in order to uh, craft something that has that particular constellation, you have to wait until that constellation is in the sky. And this knight so happens to have it. All right, so we got to do pretty much the same thing we did before. We need to pick up these guys, and we have to have enough of these specific... Uh, spectral relays in order for us to do another constellation. There has to be one for every point, and I think Octans... Is that a five? Let's actually go back real quick. Octans had... No, it's just four. Okay, we're fine. All right, so now we need to grab Octans out of here. And do one of those numbers. And again, we get the little highlights so we can see where we need to place these guys. So there, there, here, and over here. Cool. So now we have a new constellation that we can attune with. Now the thing is about uh, the iridescent altar, you can put in any crystal here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be really garbage. It doesn't have to be the celestial ones. It can be one of these rock crystals, like this one right here. You can find like the crappiest one if you really want to. 20% purity doesn't matter. Just as long as you attune it, that's all that matters. So we grab this crystal, we throw it right here, and we turn this one up. And then when we want to craft with it, all we got to do is grab that crystal, put it into this slot here, which will reveal the constellation. In fact, we can see that now if we grab this uh, attuned crystal that we did for Horologium, you can see it right here. Yep. And then that would allow us to craft anything that requires that specific constellation. All right. So this should be about done over here. Cool. So now if we put that in here, we can see... This constellation. Yep. And it should show it on the ground, which it does. So now we know we have a visual confirmation that we're crafting with this particular constellation. So when we want to craft these crystal clusters, as long as we have everything in here that is required, we have the constellation, it should work. All right. So in order to do this one, we're going to need celestial crystals. So we can use any of these garbage tier ones. Doesn't matter. Our pure ones are on the bottom. These are the ones that we can craft with. Yeah, we got plenty of those to craft. Uh, so we can use those here. And then we need the spacious crystals, lots of the star metal, and then ruby. Uh, and then we're also going to need pure fluex, so that's going to be something else. I don't know if we have any of these spacious. We have four. Perfect. We must have had to do that for a quest. Let me get rid of this constellation paper, put that back in the book. Okay, so we have the spacious crystal. We need a ruby. Okay, ruby. 
Uh, we needed the crystal. All right, let's take a look at the pure fluix. And then we're also going to need, what is that, 12, 13, 14? 14 star metal. Oof, that's a little expensive. Okay, so 14 of those. So the pure fluix requires us... Uh, can we do the crystal growth, I wonder? Like, I see there's the enrichment, but I wonder, can we do crystal growth accelerators? There's a crystal growth chamber, which does not look expensive at first glance. The crystal growth accelerators do require Fluex block, so that's regular Fluex, and Fluex is made by charged Certus, Nether, and Redstone in a puddle. Well, that's not bad. So we should be able to do that. Constantan, we can make quartz glass we've made. Emmy glass cable. Is there anything funny about this? Glass quartz powder. That all looks pretty simple. So moving on, uh, reinforced servo is a Electrum. Iron, redstone glass, all easy. Obsidian chest is a diamond chest. So that's a little expensive, but we can do it. That's not like crazy. Um, all right. So I tell you guys what, I'm going to go ahead and start working on making a crystal growth chamber. I feel like you can power that directly with RF, but maybe we can only power that with AE power. And if that's the case, we should probably take a look at the, uh, the power acceptor. Or ener energy acceptor is what it's called. Energy acceptor. This thing. And that looks rather inexpensive as well iridium plates we should have plenty of iridium yeah we got plenty of that so we should be able to convert rf into ae power to power the crystal growth chamber to make the pure fluix all right let's get started all right guys so a good portion of the leg work is out of the way we still have to make a reinforced servo here we have our six crystal growth accelerators i made a whole bunch of extra quartz glass i made uh, a full Full stack recipe worth the quartz fiber, which ended up getting us three stacks of that. Uh, we have some extra I mean, glass cable left over. But anyway, the crystal growth chamber is what we're looking at here. And there it is. Cool. So we have that one done. I'm not sure. Okay, there is a quest for it. We got a quest for making the crystal growth accelerators. I wasn't sure if that had a quest. So both of those are done. So energy acceptor is the last one that we need to do here. Uh, so radium plate. We need to grab four of those and then just go downstairs and squish those into a plate using our compactor. We'll take out the gear augment. Yep, and then that is pretty quick now that we have this thing upgraded to a resonant compactor. It could be even faster if we add in some of the other augments here to speed it up, but it's fast enough for now. Right, so now that that's done, we should have everything in our inventory to craft this, so let's craft it. Awesome. So that is now done. Is there a quest to complete for that one? Not feeling like it. Let's take a look at the quest book. Uh, so I did upgrade the pack recently. So the quest book is slightly different now. So the quest line, you click the button and then you can choose. And the little description thing that was down here that used to tell you what this page was about is not there anymore. You have to click this button and then it shows up here. I'm not sure I like that. I don't know if that's configurable or not, but that's the way... The pack is now uh, that zoom to fit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. If you scroll in or whatever, like it'll put it all at 100% or whatever. So I like that feature. Uh, there was a thing, though. I was supposed to run a command since we upgraded the pack and some of the quests were changed. What was it? Slash BQ admin. Uh, maybe I can't do it because I'm not op. I might have to do it on the server console. It's like BQ admin default load or something. Anyway, that's supposed to update some of the quest text and things like that. I guess I'll just worry about that later. I thought I could just do it right now, but I'm not op on my local server. Uh, all right, so Fluix Crystal. Yeah, so we got a few of these ones done, which is fantastic. So we'll worry about those in a little bit. Let's grab our energy acceptor. We'll just put it down here on our power thing, since this is where all of our power is right now. We're just going to plop this down here and plop this on top. So this should be converting the RF to AE power, which should be powering our crystal growth chamber, which should allow us to easily take uh, the Fluix seeds and convert them into the Fluix crystal. So Fluix seed. 
Those are made with Fluex dust mixed with sand. You get two seeds this way. And then, yeah, we just put them into the crystal growth chamber. Whoops, <laughs> hit the pressure plate. So let's, oh, I guess the first thing we should do is start making some Fluex dust, huh? So over in our pulverizer, oh, I don't know. Let's just do a full stack. Why not? I mean, I think pretty much everything that you need a Fluex crystal for, you can replace with a pure Fluex crystal. So it's just more efficient. Uh, so we are going to need a full stack of sand. Okay, so now that we have those, we can just start mixing this stuff. We don't need to do all of them right at the same time. But there's 50 Fluex seeds. Quest complete, crystal dusts. Nice. And if we throw that into here, yeah, this is now uh, growing it. So we could make this faster if we had the growth or the acceleration cards in here. I don't even know what those cost. Probably Fluex, right? Yeah, so it's advanced card plus Fluex, and then the advanced card required us to have a calculation processor, which we haven't even done yet. I think we can make that, though. Steel plates, sticky pistons, and a Fluex crystal. That doesn't seem so bad. Really, what I want to do at this point is get us to have digital storage. That's, like, my main goal to do, to get us to the ME controller, start setting this up, and then routing that so we have digital storage. Man, I guess we just unlocked a whole bunch of quests here. Uh, so there's pure Fluex crystal. Energy acceptor. I guess that did have a quest. All right. Are we done? <laughs> are we done with the fanfare for a minute? Uh, this. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Okay. So uh, the crystal dust. I mean, we must have already had the crushed quartz. Yeah, we've gotten that from sifting. And we got this one from sifting. And this one we just made. So that unlocked that quest, which unlocked these other ones. So Emmy glass cables, it wants us to do the smart and the dense. We'll worry about that later. That's not important right now. So yeah, it looks like our next step is to do the storage components, which we're definitely going to want a lot of these. So that's either Certus or pure Certus, Redstone, and the Logic Processor. So that is going to require us to make an inscriber and get started down this path here. Uh, I guess first things first, I will take care of this rest of the, uh, the dust that we made. Turn that into the pure Fluex, and then we'll continue on, guys. All right, guys, so we have enough stuff here in order to make two of these blocks, the crystal clusters. That's what we need to make our ME controller. Obviously, we're going to need some other stuff here, but, yeah, we need these made. Well, anyway, we have uh, one celestial crystal in there, nothing special about it. We should be able to start this craft up. Yeah, we have the Octans thing. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I did forget this. We have to put two star metal ingots over here. So I'll put one here and one here. Yep, now that recipe completes just fine. So I'll throw this other celestial crystal right here. We'll start it up again. And this will want star metal, star metal, and done. Awesome. So now we have two of these crystal clusters. So that is part of the way to getting our ME controller. So now we need to do a little bit of mechanism. Actually, I guess we could look at doing this one. Uh, energy, oh wow, we have to make eight more energy acceptors. Ooh, I didn't realize we had to do that. Okay, well that's easy enough, I suppose. Uh, getting the iridium, that's half a stack of iridium. I don't know if we have that, and I don't remember if we can sift for it. Uh, we have some, oh yeah, we must be able to sift for it. We have this here. Okay, well, uh, we're part of the way there in this iridium ore. I think we smelt that and we get some stuff, right? Oh, we get a lot of stuff. So this, if we smelt that, that should give us two per. Oh yeah, we're good, we're good. That's all we need. So we have enough of the iridium for this guy. And then we needed eight of these guys. Whoa, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we should have everything. All right, so I'll go ahead and get this cooking up. Whoops. Was there anything else special about this that we needed? Yeah, we're gonna need a calculation processor. So we will have to make this guy. Uh, steel plates. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and craft this up. Well, so far, so good, right, guys? We need this dense energy cell. So we have the energy cells made. That was pretty straightforward. And then I made an inscriber, so we have that as well. Uh, the inscriber, in order for us to do stuff with it, is going to need uh, some of these inscriber presses, though, right? So if we want to do the silicon one, we need silicon for pretty much every single processor. So the silicon inscriber press 
If we had one, we could take it and copy with a block of iron, or this is the recipe and how to acquire a inscriber silicon press. That is with Certus Quartz Essence plus silicon. Well, the silicon I think is pretty easy. Yeah, we have silicon. I think that's, or dictionary, that should work just the same. Certus Quartz Essence though, that comes from Certus Quartz Seeds. It's like the only way to get it, right? So Certus Quartz Seeds is what we need to get that Certus Quartz Essence in order to make the Inscriber Silicon Press. And I think all of the presses, to be honest, I should double check that, but the Certus Quartz Seed can only be made on the Runic Altar from Batania. I don't think we've made the Runic Altar yet. In fact, we barely just started getting into mana in Batania. Uh, but let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So the Certus Quartz Seed does require us to have a mana diamond. It requires us to have Certus Quartz Block, which is easy enough for us to do. So those are essentially free. We got plenty of Certus. Intermedium Essence, though. We need four of these. Uh, Intermedium comes from Garfax Ingots, which we get from Landia. I believe we already have that, so that's not a big deal. And then we need the Prudentium. We need four Prudentium per Intermedium. The Prudentium is from Inferium Essence, which is essentially free. We got a bunch of that. And then the Frisian ingots, right? So it's essentially 16 of these and four Garfax for every Intermedium Essence. So we're going to need four of those plus an additional four more. So we need a total of eight of the Intermedium in order to make that crafting seed. And then we're going to need Crystal Tine Seeds. 10, 10, 10 in order to do this. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hold off on worrying about this stuff. In fact, uh, Garfax, yeah, we got plenty of this stuff. So I think we're going to be okay. If not, we can go farm that up. It's not really an issue. Um, so the Crystalline Seeds that we need, Crystalline Seeds, I'm sorry. Uh, the Crystalline Seeds that we need, can only be bred 50% chance between red seeds and burning spores. Uh, burning spores come from red seeds and carrot. All right, so that seems pretty simple to get the burning spores. The red seed comes from lapander and ferium. Lapander comes from potato and ferium, so we need potato. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to stop bookmarking these things. Uh, red and burning. So yeah, the red seeds come from lavender and ferium. Ferium is pumpkin and melon. So we need to get these. Then we need to breed that with another one and breed it for another one. It's really, it's not that bad. Like we don't have to 10, 10, 10 these. Although I probably will anyway. Uh, just because when you 10, 10, 10 them, like you will get more stuff from harvesting and, uh, it's easier for the crops to grow. You don't have to wait as long for that. Mm-hmm. We're also going to need these 10, 10, 10, it looks like, in order to make iron seeds. So might as well do that. And that's going to be like a lot of agri-craft growing and cross-breeding and all sorts of fun stuff along those lines, guys. We don't got time for that. Not in today's episode, anyway. Probably a good portion of that I will do off-camera. We've seen the agri-craft stuff before. There's nothing special about that. It just takes some time and some patience and some willpower to get those things knocked out. I don't think there's anything special there that we don't have. I'm pretty sure we have potato and carrot seeds, or we can get those pretty easily just by breaking tall grass. So yeah, it's just a matter of crafting them, crossbreeding them and all that kind of stuff. We'll probably look at that uh, a little bit next episode, I think. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Project Ozone 3. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.